Good afternoon. You are tuned in and listening to the community radio called Kenny City 88.7 FM. And you are listening to the Woman to Woman show here with, uh, with Roshan the Cleric, your host. Well, you know what? It's a beautiful, sunny COVID-19 Wednesday in this day in March. But we're not going to let the COVID-19 dampen our spirits here on the Woman to Woman show or here in community radio Kilkenny City. I have been amazed and completely just awe, in awe of so many businesses that are volunteering their services online free during this COVID-19 COVID um, pandemic and the time and keeping, especially the, the business uh, people who have a service and they're keeping the spirits up on Facebook with all their listeners and everybody who they know. So on the line, I have Donna Dunn from Donna Dunn Fitness and later on we'll be talking to Aiden from uh, uh, Synergy Pilates. And, but I've just been amazed and Donna Dunn, you are on the line. I sure am. Great to have. Thanks for having me in. Oh God, Donna! You know what? It's just like what you're doing on Facebook, lifting not just every, the parents' spirits, but your children as well are lifting the spirits of other children, and your children seem to be having such great fun with their mummy. You know, you know they are like. So what we're doing on the Facebook is um, we're doing kids' fitness classes every weekday at twelve o'clock, um, and my own two kids are just jumping in and doing the class with me. And um, what has definitely amazed me is that my own two girls have just ran with the idea. It wasn't something that I kind of, you know, I just said we're doing it. And they, they didn't nod. They didn't argue back. They just went, ah, okay. And every single day they've got up, done it, embraced it. And I actually don't think they don't, I don't, I don't think they realize what they're doing how many kids every day are watching them. You know, I think it'll be one of these things in years to come that my girls will look back and, and then realise, oh my God, we did that. So I think that that's an empowering thing for my girls. But honestly, I don't even think they realise what they're doing. I think we're just embracing it. Um, we get on every day at 12 o'clock and we just do a fun class, a fun fitness class. I challenge the kids. It's a hard workout. You know, I'm known for the hard workouts. And it gives a different focus. And I guess in this house, during the day, we're not talking about COVID-19. We're not mentioning the coronavirus. We're not checking the news. Um, we're kind of keeping a structure. So we're getting up and we're doing our schoolwork first. Two hours of schoolwork. Half nine to half eleven. And then it's just an automatic thing where we're jumping on and doing a half an hour of fitness. And then it's lunchtime. So I, I don't know if my kids realise what's going on. We're just keeping a structure. And... For me, it's working out amazing that I'm getting to do this with my own kids. We're getting to impact a lot of families in a positive way. And, you know, I, I guess even for me, it'll be one of those things in years to come. I just get to say, God, you know, in that really stressful, difficult time, you got to give back to society, which is, I guess, kind of humbling. And in years to come, I'll probably realise more what we've done than, than now. You know, that kind of way. Because... Because you're certainly lifting up the spirits of all your Facebook fans and uh, clients and, and friends and members. And even, I would say, people who've never met you before, they know you now. And it's the fact that you're, you're volunteering your services and you're just having fun doing it. Yeah, you know, I am. And it's not something that I put much thought into, I guess. Um I would probably always say that like my number one value in life is probably kindness. It, like I don't want to sound like a hippie and a, you know, um, like a do-gooder, but genuinely, like I, I'm a full-time lecturer, right? And even in that job, like my, 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 you know, my drive, my passion is, is kindness and, you know, helping the young kids, like they're only 18, 19, 20, helping them become the best that they can. Like, I'm not, I'm not from money, so I'm not motivated by money, if that makes sense. But I get an incredible sense of goodness, an incredible, I don't know, I guess I, it makes me very happy to be able to give. And like, I don't, like, I sound like, like Mother Teresa. I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to come across that way, but it's kind of the truth, like. So I guess when I decided to do this, it's not something I put much thought into. Um, I guess when we realised things are very serious, like 10 days ago, so the weekend before last, 
I guess when I realised then that this was a real serious thing in our lives and my brain was telling me that this was going to be as big as the World War Two was and I, I'm, I'm passionate about World War Two history, you know, and my brain was thinking, God, this is humongous. And my natural yeah. instinct was, you have a skill here, you have a talent, just give, you know, just give. And that's that's it, like, that's, that's long and short of it. I do have a skill and I do have a talent and, you know, it is time to give and there's lots of people giving, you know, and I think that that, like you said at your introduction there, there right now, there are so many people giving an awful lot more than what I'm giving. Like, I get to stay in my house I get to exercise with my kids and that's a, that's my way of giving in a safe way but there's doctors, there's nurses you know, there's a lot of people on the front line who are actually putting themselves out there giving their, their health, their time you know their everything to fight this disease on a much bigger scale so when I even put it into perspective speaking off the cuff now I get to say God my giving is... <laughs> It's fairly minor compared to what some people are given. I would so, like, disagree you, there, though, uh, really? Donna. Okay. I would, because I would say that you're keeping the mental and emotional and f- physical health of the people who tune in at 12 o'clock every day on Facebook. To, I'll say it for you, for Donna Don Fitness. Donna, you're helping lift the mental and emotional vibrations as well as keeping people physically fit. Yeah, and that, that's lovely to, that's lovely for you to say. And I guess, uh, Roshan, it'll probably be one of these things that I'm getting hundreds of messages from parents saying thank you. And I, like all of these I will keep, but it'll probably be one of those things you have to reflect upon. You know, when you're in the middle of it. Yes. I, I guess this will be one of those things where I look back and go, God, you made a difference. You know, and I guess because now when you're in the thick of it, and we're really busy, I mean, we're re- I'm really busy with it, which is amazing. Like, um, like almost to the point that I'm, I'm under pressure to keep up with it a little sometimes, you know, because every ki- parent that sends a message, every kid that submits us drawings, because I keep asking the kids to draw us a picture of Mr. Coronavirus, and this week we're doing a county colours thing. So every kid that sends a message, I'm sending them back a message. You know, it might be a video message, it might be a voice message on the WhatsApp, or if they've contacted us on the Facebook, um, I'm sending them back a message. So it is taking time, but I guess it'll be one of those things where in years to come, maybe I look back and go, God, you did good there, kid. You know, you really did help in that situation. So thanks, and I, I appreciate you acknowledging it. You know, I, I, I don't think I've realised it yet myself, if that makes sense. But I, I think everybody who tunes in, we we feel that. Now, I because of my back and everything, I don't do the fitness, but I, I'm a spectator. <laughs> I, you know what? That in itself is enough, though, because even if, like, and there's lots of people who are spectating, and there's lots of kids who are spectating, but even to have the positive crack, you know, like we're having great crack, that's lifting moods, you know. And yes. even that will change your mindset, you know, that you might not feel so doom and gloom. You might be reaching for the extra biscuits. Maybe you'll go out for an extra walk because you got a little pep in your step. So even being a spectator, you're actually probably changing your mindset a lot, um, exactly. which you don't even realize yourself, you know. So that's, that's, that's brilliant to hear. And especially to watch your children get involved too, Donna. And they're so energetic. And the other day, they were, I said, oh my God, they must be having a uniform now because they were both wearing the same sort of uh, colours and dresses. And the energy and just the smiles on their faces, it's just really heartwarming. It is. And you know what? I, and I, I am actually bold over that they haven't complained. They haven't, and that's the truth, they haven't once said, no, we don't want to do it. Now, come here. From half nine in the morning to half eleven, we are murdering each other trying to get the <laughs> schoolwork done. Like it, it isn't all. It isn't all. Like we're not the Waltons, I swear. So we're definitely killing each other first. But that's but family it, life. That's, that's family, family life. life. And it, you know what? There's skills and there's merits in falling out and working as a team. But when it comes to doing the videos, I, I'm almost standing waiting for them to go, we're not doing this. This was your idea. But they haven't. They've just embraced it. Um, two days ago, Millie felt tired and she didn't want to do it all. And, you know, and, and I'm really like this with all the sport that my kids do. Um, I literally just said, sure, that's grand. Do a little bit and then sit down on the couch. You know, so I'm not 
I'm not, I never force my kids to do lots of sport either. I think they'll come to it in their own good time. So when Millie was tired, I let her do what she did. And she dipped in and she dipped out. Um, but I am waiting for them to tell me to, let, to go and let with you in your Facebook. That, that's your idea. But so far, so good. And they are embracing it and they are getting much fitter. And they're building confidence. You know, they really are. They're building their own confidence. And two, and again, they're I, answering, yeah. they're the younger generation, in their way, they are answering to Eileen's call by uplift, doing exactly what their mum is doing. They're uplifting the, the viewers and the people yes. watching. They are, they're giving upliftment mentally and emotionally, just like their mother and physically. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm, I'm quite surprised at that is when we're doing the videos, that my kids will say things back during the videos, things that I won't have prompted them or, you know, I guess things that I don't think they're picking up on, but they are picking up on. You know, I like, I have quite a positive attitude. Now, I, again, I don't want to come across like Mother Teresa. I'm not always positive. I have down days. You know, I, I definitely struggle with my mental health on times as well. So I'm not saying that I'm always positive, but 90% of the time, my natural instinct is a positive thought. And, and I guess I probably worked on that over the years. And I didn't realise how much the girls were taking in my positive attitude. And then we'll be in the video and we'll be just chit-chatting because it's all live. There's nothing record, pre-recorded. And I'll be surprised at the, the things the kids will say back. You know, they might say, but you don't have to be brilliant at it, ma'am. You just have to try your best. Isn't that lovely? Isn't it that is, lovely? It is. That's been one of the things that I just go, God, well done, you. It's, you know, I couldn't. I couldn't have paid you to say that. <laughs> so, I guess it's been an amazing um, journey. It's an amazing that we are getting to share it together. And what's lovely as well, I'm getting lots of messages from parents in the same. Um, I'm doing this with my daughter, or we have dads. Like today, I gave a shout out to a dad from Wicklow, and every day, him and his daughter are are logging on. He's taking his lunch break when he's trying to work from home. And they're jumping on together to do it. And he said, it's great to have this to do with my daughter, you know. So I am getting lots of those messages. So, you know what, that is that is going to be, um, that is uplifting and it's really great to hear. And it, what you're doing and your two children are doing is you're, you're, do, you're doing something um, where you wouldn't normally do every single day. But through the positives that are coming out of COVID-19 is that you're, you're having b uh, bonding time with your children and you're creating that space which w wouldn't ordinarily happen in everyday life with other, as you said, with the father in Wicklow and with his daughter and with everybody else. Yeah, yeah, and we are, yeah, and that is that, that that is a really good thing you pointed out. Like when you make it part of your norm and a part of your routine, it is something that you get to do together. And you know, life. I, I guess if we could look at positives from COVID nineteen, you know, like we are all forced to be at home. We are all being under a little bit of pressure to manage to work from home and juggle three million things in the air at the same time. And I guess that half an hour where you're just switching off. Like, during that half an hour, you're only in the moment. Like, we're only in the moment of the exercise. And I guess if you're doing it at home, you're only in the moment. You don't care that the, the, the dishes are in the sink. You don't care that your emails are building up in your inbox. You just live in that 30 minutes. And, you know, I don't think we do enough of that in life. I don't. Like, I don't think that we do enough of how about we just be in the now. And I think that that's super important. And... Like, that, that is an amazing thing for us to be kind of doing in this horrendous pandemic that we're experiencing. Like, switching off and slowing down. You know, that is an amazing thing. And the health benefits and the mental health benefits of just staying in the now is phenomenal. It's funny you're saying that. That's what I was just thinking when I was getting ready to walk out the door to come over here to the community radio station. That... I'm actually in the moment. I'm actually, my my mind is very quiet. Whereas yeah. usually I'd be doing 10, 15 things all at the one time. Yeah, and I think most of us do that. And you know the way I do the online, uh, I have online fitness programs as well. And actually what I do in that, and I've been doing that for years. And you know, to, to take it back one step, like I admire the likes of Aideen who's coming on next and the likes of all the other gyms, right? I've been in the online space for a couple of years. 
So for me to move into an online space in such a pandemic, it wasn't such an ordeal, but I genuinely, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I admire people like Aideen and, you know, lots of other trainers who come a week ago, their natural space wasn't the online and to be able to step in and produce classes and learn those skills in such a short space of time, not only are they under pressure to keep their family safe, keep their own health in check, they've also le- learned, had to learn to master a new, completely different skill set, um, you know, which has been amazing. But going back to your point, like, um, to stay, uh, what I was saying about being in the moment, lots of the online stuff that I do is actually about being in the moment. It's about learning to be okay with your body weight in the moment while you're working on where you'd like to go. Like, we have to learn to be okay with today because hating yourself today doesn't mean that you're going to be skinnier or be happier. It's a learning, and, and life is about learning to be in the now. And right now, I weigh 10 stone, but I would like to be nine and a half stone, but right now, 10 stone is where I'm at. And to learn to say, okay, but I'm working on that and I'm moving towards that. And to learn to be in that mind space and in the now, I think that's the skill that we're missing. Um, And a lot of stuff that I would do, say, in my regular online, like some of the goals that we set is sit down and have a family meal. Put the phones away and sit and have dinner with your tribe and be in the now. So it's all those skills about being in the now. And even for you to say... Look at that few minutes you had to walk over to the radio station today to be in the now. That that moment that you're in the now is, is what we're all actually striving for. Like that happiness, that contentment. My mind isn't wandering. I'm not thinking about when I'll be happy when. I need to buy this. I need to do this. It's to be in that space is happiness. And that's what we're actually all striving for. And when you and think about it, we're all in it together. Oh, unbe- I, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, and and the, the quicker people realise that this pandemic is stopping for nobody. Nobody. And the only way for all of us to survive this is to operate as a massive team. To do things for the good of others, not for the good of yourself. To look at this pandemic as something that unless we work as a team... It's unstoppable. And, like yeah, and when you think how all the communities are all coming together, it's oh, just—it's just amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And now we live out here in an amazing community in Stonyford here in Kilkenny. It's genuinely an amazing community to live, right? But when we, um, when COVID nineteen kicked in last week, you know, and I see people in the Kells, and I saw lots of other groups do it. Like there was people producing COVID nineteen right. volunteer numbers people delivering them through the letterboxes of houses that if you get struck down, here's volunteer numbers to get your shopping. Here's who you can call. You know, that's what will that's what will win. And you know one other thing as well that is worth pointing out. COVID-19 and this unfortunate horrendous pandemic is actually making an awful lot of people reevaluate and reassess the important things in life. And for these horrendous few weeks that we're we're going to experience, people are really concerned about their loved ones, about quality time, about doing the simple things in life. But we're not worried about how many holidays I can go on and, you know, what do I have that makes me look successful? You know, we've, we, we're moving back into the simple things. We're looking forward to seeing our parents. We miss the connection between being able to call and visit your grandparents whenever you wanted. And, like, as a positive out of this negative, it's amazing to be reminded what's important in life. I just think that that's amazing. And I guess this is probably what brought us 360 around to me being able to spend, to do these Facebook with my kids. I'm getting to spend quality time with my kids, giving and doing what's right collectively as a team. So I guess it all comes full circle in a way. You know, so it's it's funny how it all works out, Roisin, isn't it? 
and you know, it's uh, we're just coming. We're really all just all all the small communities, uh, as you said, the, what people are doing in Kells. I saw Hugh's um, farming. He couldn't sell, uh, sell his daffodils, so he, he he was saying to everybody, "Come out." As long as you don't come out at, at 12 p.m. out in yep. Kells, just come and, and lift a um, a bunch donation. of daffodils. Absolute, absolute. And we did that. We went and we got our donation. And we went up, we left our donation. And you know what we did with the daffodils? I got the kids then to get on their bikes and cycle to an older lady's house, drop them at the front door, ring the doorbell and run away. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah, but, you know, isn't that what's amazing? Yeah. You know, isn't that what... And, and you can only do... You can only find the positives and... Like, for people who maybe are listening today and, you know, maybe you're feeling low, like there's lots of people who've lost their jobs, there's lots of people who are missing their families. Like, if you can focus on what skill you have to contribute in a positive way to this pandemic, maybe it's writing a poem or maybe it's not that I've ever wrote a poem in my life, but if, if you look at the skills you have, that you can in any way, shape or form positively contribute to somebody else's day your mindset changes from being someone who's just lost their job to being okay i've lost my job but i've really went down my way to help today and it just puts your mindset in a complete different place so paying it forward i just think is is one thing if we can all just if you think of how can i pay it forward it makes this pandemic a little bit easier to survive it does, especially when. Well, I, I'm lucky. Well, I suppose I'm lucky. I'm, I've I, my son is at home with me, but my daughter is in Cork, and so. But we speak all every day on the phone. She is in the um, health service, wow. and you know she's been called back back to Vincent's as well. So she'll be going back to Vincent's uh, in the front line, but we we keep connected on the phone. And Amazing. isn't that the wonderful, the wonderful positives of uh, technology and social media now? Absolutely, absolutely. And when we realised things were getting, you know, really challenging, like um, to set up an older person with WhatsApp, yeah. or to, you know, to make sure that an older person, you know, had enough data on their phone. I mean, the the this. I think the vulnerable groups, the groups who are really affected by the pandemic, are the are the older generation and the kids. Like, the, 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 my age, like, like I'm 40 now with two kids, you know. Like, our age, we just got busier. Juggling yes. work, juggling kids. We just got busier. You know what I mean? But, like, the younger kids, they're missing their friends. You know, they're missing their connection. They're missing the freedom. They're missing the liberty to just be a kid, legging it around the street. And the older generation, they're missing that opportunity to call and see the grandkids. You know, so... Like the, the, the to set your older groups up with the data with the WhatsApp, like to have that connection is at least making it a little bit bearable. Or downloading Netflix or ringing your mother to tell her how to download Netflix, and you know that stuff is it is just to help. The technology can be used in an amazing way. You know, it really can. I know, and you know, it was like uh, I have to give a shout out. You might know Paddy Manning; he's from Thomastown, and he was saying that um, that uh, he put a, a blog up on Facebook. If there was anybody out there in the community and all the uh, elder uh, members in the community, if they needed any shopping, and he put his phone number up on social media, LinkedIn, and just to be there to actually help. And I just think, Paddy, that is a lovely thing to do. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're seeing an awful lot of that. Like, you're seeing an awful lot of goodness and an awful lot of kindness coming from an awful lot of different groups, you know. And I think that if, if we can just embrace that and really highlight that stuff, it really makes this, I don't know, bearable. And I do think, Ocean, we, we still have an awful long time to go. And if I could maybe, you know, share some tips, I think that in these first few weeks where we're just adjusting, if you could actually open your mind when you see, when you see those posts, set your routine in place. You know, start writing down the important information that you need, because in the next few weeks, it's going to get a, a lot more challenging. And kind of have your ducks in the row. So, if you are in the Thomastown area, write down um, Mr. Manning's phone number. Stick it on your fridge so you know where it is if you need it. Set your routines in place. Set up a schedule in place so that. When it's, you know, the first two weeks, as challenging as they are, 
they're not going to be half as challenging as the few weeks that are to come yes. because we get a little bit more I don't want to say lazy we drop our routines right now we're in we're in adjustment mode but in the next few weeks we'll start dropping our routines we won't try to get walking in as much you know we won't look after our mental health as much by getting some fresh air so I do think that these two weeks are all about getting the information and getting the systems and the structure in place that you need for when the next few weeks are going to come. Well, uh, Donna Dunn from Donna Dunn Fitness, maybe we'll have you on regularly uh, on the Woman to Woman show through this um, uh, COVID um, pandemic just to give little tips every week of how to keep people in the, in the present moment, how to keep their mental and emotional and physical health uplifted. I, I would love that. And as always, these are only t- uh, like ideas and tips I have. And just to get across, like, we're, like we fall out and we fight like every other family. So you're you know, human. Have, you're human. human. <laughs> we have up and down days. And I think that that's a real important message to get across. Um, you know, we're doing our best. And the tips I give, those tips work 80% of the time for me. And then 20% of the time, I fall off the train like everybody else. And I reset and I go again. So I, I'm only happy to share my thoughts, my ideas, you know, and, you know, some of my, my thinking with, with people if they find it helpful. And, and I'll also tell you every time I fall off the wagon as well, just to let you know that it's all real, it's all human. And falling off the wagon and having bad days, having low days and crying your eyes out, that's all part of the process. And you know what? That's what makes the good days the good days. That's what makes the good days the good days. Roisin, stay safe and mind yourself. And I know Aideen is up next past. My good regards to Aideen. She's a, she's a real great girl, full of kindness as well, and uh, a great admiration for Aideen. Well, well, we'll all join the Mutual Admiration Society here on the Woman to Woman Show. <laughs> good luck. Take, Take care. care God bless. Bye-bye. Thank and you, everyone. Bye. Stay bye-bye. safe. Bye.